بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome to this first video in my new series on generative AI and large language models. Today I'm going to present a use case about how we can use ChatGPT to automatically make the grading of programming assignments. So let's get started. So the, the story actually started today when I started to teach again the course on programming too, which is on object oriented programming. And usually when we do the grading, it's pretty much require a lot of focus and there are pretty much a lot of details that we need to care about them. So my intention was actually to check whether ChatGPT could be an effective manner to make the grading for this kind of programming assignment. So let me show you a sample of exams that I used to do for my programming courses. This was like uh, three or four years ago. And uh, usually start by making a problem. This is the problem statement and then we will have different questions. So this is one of the quizzes I've done three years ago. So here there is a, so we have the general context, we have here the question, and this is the sample solution. Okay, so now the objective was actually how I can make it effective to use ChatGPT to evaluate the student answer. So this is the solution model that I usually build for my exams, and we get this kind of answers from the students. Okay, so we need to make sure about whether this, uh, the code presented here satisfies all the requirement. Okay, which is, okay, when the number of students is large, it may become heavy because we need to focus and we need to make sure that all the requirements were met and to which extent. Okay, so now I actually tried today to implement a use case, a uh, ChatGPT proof of concept showing how we can automatically grade the programming assignments. So this is another answer also you, you can, for example, find some errors related, for example, the getter and setters or missing some information or probably don't respond to all the requirements. And sometimes you can get a cumbersome code like this, which is very difficult to, to understand and so on. So I think the machine, if it cannot really evaluate, it can help to evaluate and at least identify flaws in the code with respect to the requirement. So here I have taken six samples of uh, responses from my students. And I've developed a Python program that will connect to ChatGPT and send the information. And finally, okay, let me show you how it will work. So it's pretty much interesting because I find that the grading is, is really very efficient and very close to my grading. And in some of the cases, it can detect things that probably we, we as humans, we don't pay attention. For example, system.out.println for the two-string function satisfies the requirement of the formatting. Okay, so let me get started with the program. So I'm going to execute the program. It's uh, grading.py. And here, okay, it will take the, the name of the student. And here we are going to make the evaluation question by question. So usually we provide uh, the context, the main problem, the question, and the answer of the student, and also the maximum grade. So for example, here for student, uh, this student with this ID, of course, these are fictitious IDs, question one, the maximum grade is two. So it will evaluate, it will whether say it's correct or partially correct or incorrect. And based on the correctness, it will give the grade. Okay, so here the maximum grade is two. So since it's correct, it will have a grade. So there is two grading policies, one that is categorical and another one that is made by ChatGPT. Uh, there are some differences, for example, here. So as you can see here, when it's partially correct, sometimes there is a deviation between the two gradings. So here the grading is made by ChatGPT itself. And here the grading, whether when it is partially correct, is going to assign just half of the grade. Whatever partially correct, I mean, it's uh, completely different or slightly different. It will just, this is like a static assignment uh, that I wanted to try. And this is like an automatic grade assignment by ChatGPT. There is difference, especially when you do the sum. So here it has evaluated six students. And here, as you can see, we get a CSV file that contains all the grading. And this is pretty much excellent because let me show you here the result. So for every student here, we can have the student name and the evaluation by GPT or the static evaluation will say it's correct. And here it will give you a complete explanation. So it will say the student answers correctly, implements the position class, encapsulation data hiding. It has defined the... So it will make pay attention to every detail in the question and will contrast the response with respect to the questions. So let me, for example, go to the student one here. I will open the copy just to check and I will take the solution. 
Okay? And let's see now, compare the difference between both. Of course, and here ChatGPT is smart because it doesn't require that you have an exact text-to-text -text mapping. It can be some differences, but the most important thing, it will, for example, here in the solution, I have written latitude and here it's written lat. So it doesn't consider that this is different. And here we have the, uh, the constructor is made. So here we need to do a full argument constructor, a copy constructor, and the default constructor. So three constructors. So it has identified that it has the three. So this is the, this is the solution of the student. Position is the full argument constructor. He's uh, the default constructor. And we have also the copy constructor. Okay, so this is the copy constructor here. Okay, uh, the, these are the getter and setter methods, exactly like we've done here. There is also the data validation, throwing the exception. All the requirements are met. Okay, so it considers that this solution is correct. So let's look at another solution. For example, there is one student here, it gets a very low mark. Okay, so the first, it's partially correct. And the two other is zero. So this is student number, uh, number four. Okay, so let me open now student number four and contrast it. So as you can see, student number four, you get only one out of two here because his response was partial. Okay, it made the attributes fine. It made the full argument constructor, but there is no copy constructor. There is no default constructor. It has detected this and there is public void altitude uh, didn't make the getter and setters. So it get only one point out of three. And now if we look at the justification, for example, for student four and question number one, it says the answer partially meets the requirement of the question. The position class is correctly implemented with private instance variables. So it, it, it did the private instance variables, the attributes. The full argument constructor is implemented correctly. However, the student has defined setter and method for altitude with incorrect method names. Okay, and this is true because here the getter and setter must start with get and set. So look at which detail it can actually identify it's pretty much amazing. And let's continue here. And also additionally, the copy constructor and default constructor are missing. And this is correct. There is no default constructor and there is no copy constructor. So it's really amazing the level of detail that it can detect. The two-string method also, it also detects the last requirement, which is about the two-string method, is also incorrect. So it was also able to identify that the formatting of this look, it's percent four, uh, there should be, for example, percent for point F or something like this, percent point for F, yes, or to F. So it detected that the two string method is also not correct. Okay, even, even the name of the method is not correct. Yeah, so I want to show you like, the capabilities of ChatGPT to automatically grade even programming assignments because programming assignments are not multiple choice questions, are not something like that you can automate easily, like for example, we do for MCQs and similar simple questions, things that we can also on LMS, on Moodle or Blackboard, it requires some kind of intelligence. And you can see the maturity of large language models in achieving this level of capability and skills to even analyze the response of students and contrast it to the requirement. And by the way, in the prompt I have done, I didn't actually provide the solution model, the chat GPT. I only provided the question the which contains the requirement and the student answer and the overall problem. I only provide this information. This is the problem. I provide the problem. I provide the question which provides the requirement and the solution of the student. And based on this, it will actually check whether all these requirements are satisfied in the student answer. So that's pretty much amazing. Now, this is just a demonstration about the capability of ChatGPT to automate the grading of programming assignments, it may have a lot of advantages. First of all, of course, it will speed up the process. It's, I think it's very reliable so far, at least for this experiment. And also imagine that we have, and usually in programming, we can have multiple sections and we want to unify the grading for all these sections. So I think using this kind of technique, we can have a unified strategy for grading by large language models or ChatGPT in this case. But of course, in any case, we know that large language models and ChatGPT, they have several limitations like hallucination. They may, they may make errors and mistakes. And this is here where we have to actually verify the responses. At least it can provide an additional way 
to even if we don't rely on grading, it can help on verification of the grading or finding the explanation for giving a certain grade. So if, for example, we don't trust this, probably, and of course, even we as human, if we give the same copy to different instructors, especially in, in, uh, in programming, they may have different opinion and they may have different grading strategy. And using AI, I think it's a good alternative to have a unified grading strategy for all the different copies. Okay, thank you very much. Just, just a quick presentation about things I have been thinking and uh, developing today. And if you have any feedback, I will be more than happy to discuss this further with you. See you in the next video lecture of this series on generative AI and large language models.